Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include David Cameron is right to listen to the public on Europe, says Rachida Dati. The delinquency sufferers the biggest rise in September 2013 and plays around 12.6%. EU and Seychelles sign fisheries access agreement. And so there, tens of thousands of EU officials get more content. Plus, action programme for EU taxation. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the unit nightly news. First, from our homepage. With her Christian Dior dresses and designer jeans, she became the chic, cool face of France's otherwise staid political class. Rachida Dati, the daughter of an Arab bricklayer, clawed her way to the top of the French establishment to become Justice Minister in Nicolas Sarkozy's centre-right presidency, bringing a dash of street cred to a government seen as stuffy, out of touch and overwhelmingly male. The 47-year-old star of the Paris Glamour magazines never made any secret of her unwavering ambition for high office. But after fa falling out with Mr Sarkozy, she found herself sacked from his cabinet and exiled to Brussels. In an interview, Raichi just said, David Cameron's proposals show he is listening to people, listening to the British citizens. I believe the British, like the French, are probably pro-Europe. However, they are not pro-European institutions. Well, the problem here is that, in reality, King Cameron, the Cabbage Patch Kid, is not listening to the British public at all. He's behaving more like his ears are stuffed with fluff. The problem may not necessarily be Mr Cameron, however. What is never getting discussed before the public is that the idea of the EU legislative framework. Now, this imposes control at every level and ties the hands of our own elected politicians into being impotent. And from here, it seems that if the British people want to see democratic change in the UK, then there needs to be an utterly new government. The defaults on bank loans in September suffered the biggest rise so far in 2013 and climbed to 12.6%, according to data published by the Bank of Spain on Monday. The rise in bad loans, which reached 187,830 million after seven straight months, is because the refinancing progress is coming to an end and the entities are adjusting their accounts in order to close the year. With the EU Commission's latest round of huge fines imposed on banks for rigging LIBOR, I think European economies should expect further pain in January as bank capitalisation struggles again. The European Union and the Seychelles have successfully initiated a fishery access agreement at a meeting in Victoria, which will allow Seychelles flagged vessels to continue fishing operations in the waters of Mayotte. These waters will become EU waters when Mayotte becomes an outermost region of the EU on 1st of January 2014. Now, this agreement will allow eight tuna purse seine vessels to operate in the waters of Mayotte under the jurisdiction of the EU for the next six years with payment of licence and catch fees coming directly from the ship owners. Well, reading like an ordinary piece of news sounds like the EU is blissfully continuing its expanse throughout Europe. Aha, not on your Nelly. When I read this story, I thought, Seychelles. Hmm, not that big on geography, but I'm pretty sure that's not in Europe. Now, unless the continental plates have shifted in such a way as to sink Africa into the Atlantic and conjoin the Indian Ocean with the Mediterranean, then I'm right. The Seychelles are about 500 miles north-northeast off the coast of Madagascar in the Indian Ocean. And interestingly, these new EU fishing waters are neighbouring to the piratical waters of Somalia. Yet, in the expansive, cold, empty, special minds of the EU kleptocrat, apparently they are in Europe, as on January 1st, Mayotte becomes a region of the European Union. <music> the 
EU officials can expect more salary despite the EU pay freeze, up to €240 Euros extra a month. The reason? The pension contributions are to be drastically reduced retroactively to July, thereby increasing the income of the Euro Bureau kleptocrats. Around 57,000 EU officials can expect rising net salaries this year, despite two salary freezes, according to a report in the Build newspaper on Friday. Do you know, friends, this is just infuriating. <laughs> this time of year always makes me think about the films you've seen on TV. One of my favourites is Oliver Twist. This EU pay story makes me think of the scene just after young Oliver has asked for more gruel and is dragged yelling by the ear before Mr Bumble. Sitting at the table are the commissioners of the workhouse, fat and rotund, their cheeks glistening with grease from the enormous roasted dinner before them, each reinforcing the view of the other that this young impotent waif is ungodly, unjust and impertinent. Perhaps such a scene is not far from reality, as the people in Greece, Spain, Portugal and Italy seek food, shelter and warmth as the winter onset begins. Do not think that the impoverished are confined there. We had an anonymous tip-off recently explaining that UK welfare services were reducing or removing council tax benefits from some on welfare. One example cited a young man who hadn't had a hot drink for four days. He was unable to receive any more aid from the food bank and had no money because his benefits were being taken away to pay for council tax. This is the reality of the work that the Barroso Bumble and the Commission executives of the EU Workhouse have achieved. Of course, to be able to afford such luxury for our Belgian Senate, some poor unfortunates have to foot the bill. And those unfortunates are you and I. The Fiscalis 2020 programme aims to support the cooperation between national tax authorities to help maximise their efficiency and avoid mismatches in their work, which could hinder the internal market. Fiscalis 2020 would facilitate networking, joint actions and training amongst tax personnel, while also funding IT systems to ensure efficient exchange of information between national tax administrations. Well, as usual, the EU speaks in discrete semaphore, using words like facilitate networking, avoid mismatches in work, efficient exchange. Let's refrain from that for a clearer view. Under the EU taxation programme, known as Fiscalis 2020, the EU seeks to connect the taxation systems of member states, allowing information flow between all tax states. Providing an EU-wide IT system will activate efficient exchange of information between the administrations. We, of course, could pitch it even more simply. This legislation provides the framework to enable the completion of an EU-wide tax system in line with the project aims of the 2020 Fiscalis programme. Well, if you don't want the EU kleptocrats knocking on your door demanding your papers, then you might want to try tugging on the shirt sleeve of your nearest neighbouring TV soap sloth. Ask them politely to switch off the TV for ten minutes, get their laptop out and email their MP with a polite but firm kick in the pants. Today in our video library, concerns are growing over the rapid rise of Muslim dominance in many cities across Europe. Followers of Islam are already talking about being able to see a time when Sharia law will be implemented across Europe and ultimately the world. This short news documentary from CNBC identifies an acute problem that looms in the near future, Sharia law. One of the key oversights that liberal thinkers all too often make is that everyone else thinks and feels as they do. In a utopian society, then unfettered liberalism is perhaps a panacea. But the people that sit around our political tables are not of the same minds. They do not think in the same ways and their aspirations and goals are vastly different. Whether that be corporate profiteering, megalomaniac desires for power, religious domination or just simple political career greed. There is only one mechanism that can counter such hidden agendas. And that is democracy en masse. A society that retains the right of every individual to participate in and bear influence upon their society and community. Do not fear the Islamic Imam in isolation. 
fear all and everyone that would seek to deny the rights of others. The religious diktat of an Islamic leader is no lesser a threat than the directive from an unelected EU commissioner or the overruling of Westminster Parliament, as we saw Cameron do with the EU referendum debate. Wherever the voice of the people goes ignored or smited, be assured that those in the halls of power, there is malevolence at work. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit, Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>